you know what's worse than paying taxes? Unwittingly paying more in taxes than you need to. Today, we're going to talk about four tax mistakes to avoid. If you're new to my channel, my name is Anna, and here we talk about money and travel. If these topics are things you'd like to hear and learn more about, please hit that like button and subscribe. Now let's get started. The first mistake you want to avoid is not contributing to tax advantaged accounts. But which one and in what order? I recommend you start with the 401k or 403b, depending on which one your employer offers. The 403b is similar to the 401k, but the 403b is offered by public schools and certain tax exempt organizations. Because of this, for most people, the 401k is the option provided by your employer. Either way, you should contribute up to the amount that the employer matches, if applicable. You'll want to automate these contributions from your paycheck and the amount you contribute will not be taxable for that tax year. From there, if you qualify, the next category is the Roth IRA. I talk about the benefits here in my video on savings allocation for beginners, but high level, you'll want to max this out next at $6,500 for individuals under age 50 and $7,500 if age 50 years or older for 2023, both for tax benefits and for flexibility. The original contributions that you put into a Roth IRA, say $6,500 for this year, is something you can withdraw with no penalty at any time and the growth on your contributions, which historically the market has shown an increase of 10% year to year, will be tax free upon withdrawal at retirement age. And if you're married, make sure to double up on this tax strategy. Even if only one spouse has earned income, the other non-wage earning spouse can contribute to a Roth as well. So if you're married filing a joint return and your taxable income falls under 204,000 in 2022, you can contribute up to 6,000 per spouse. And for 2023, if your taxable income is $218,000 or lower, you can contribute $6,500 per spouse. You have till the tax filing deadline, not including extensions to contribute for the prior year. The next would be to max out your HSA, especially if you have a high deductible plan. Quick summary, there are three benefits from this. It's deductible from your income, the income growth is tax-free, and the withdrawals from your HSA is tax-free, assuming that you're using the withdrawn funds for eligible medical expenses, which can include deductibles, co-pays, prescriptions, vision, and dental care. My next category, if you have additional funds available, would be then to go back to your 401k or 403b and contribute the maximum allowed, which is 22,500 if you're under the age of 50, or up to $30,000 if you're age 50 or older. Same for the Roth 401k or Roth 403b. If you can find an investment option that suits your needs, as 403b plans tend to have less investment options like annuities or mutual funds. On that topic, if deciding between investing on mutual funds or annuities, it depends on your preference and goals, but high level, if you're closer to retirement age, then annuities may make more sense for a guaranteed stream of income. Annuities guarantee your principal investments and provide income that can last through retirement, which is especially important for those who don't qualify for social security benefits, such as certain school teachers, so that it would be a good alternative for guaranteed retirement income. Again, when prioritizing, I focus not only on the tax benefits, but also on the flexibility of being able to access funds in case of emergencies. With that in mind, you'll want to confirm with your employer's specific plan, and many of these four plans will allow you to borrow from yourself for at least part of the contributed funds, rather than paying out interest to a bank for loans. Keep in mind, though, that most plans will require repayment of the loans within five years. When trying to decide whether to max out the 401k versus the Roth 401k, or if at a public school deciding between the 403b or the Roth 403b, this is a pretty complex discussion, but my general rule of thumb is this. If you're a high income earner at your peak earning years, focus on reducing the tax burden now by putting the funds in a tax deferred 401k or 403b rather than the Roth 401k or Roth 403b. Now, putting the loan option aside, which I'd like to emphasize, you only want to consider this option in case of emergencies should you really need the money. Let's talk numbers on what the immediate cash benefit would be in you putting money into these tax advantaged 401k or 403b plans. Let's say you're married and your taxable income was $150,000 in 2023. If you max out the 401k or 403b contribution of $22,500, that puts you in the 22% federal tax bracket, which means that your federal tax would go down by $4,950. And you can double these tax savings if you max out your contributions for both spouses. 
And if you're 50 or older, then your maximum contribution would be $30,000, giving you the opportunity to reduce your federal tax bill, assuming the same taxable income of $150,000 by $6,600, or double that if you're maxing out contributions for both spouses at $13,200 in tax savings. All right, we spent a lot of time talking about where you should be putting your money in tax advantage accounts. Now let's talk about the next mistake to avoid, which is blindly relying 100% on your CPA or tax software in the preparation of your tax returns. Only you're aware of all the activities that you have, which may potentially have a tax impact. If you go to your CPA and your interaction is to just dump all the tax documents that came in your mailbox in a shoebox, and then the next time you see them is just to review and sign the return, you're doing yourself and your CPA a big disservice. Think about all of the type of activities that may have changed that your CPA doesn't even know about unless you tell them. Did you start a new business? Did you convert a principal property into a rental property? Do you have new dependents, whether a child, sibling, or parent that you provide more than 50% financial support for? A lot of these questions can be captured in lengthy questionnaires, but if the document you were presented with were all inclusive, it would be daunting. And if trying to discuss this all live, it would be so time consuming and exhausting for both of you. Instead, as your circumstances change, you'll want to do some independent research and then provide any changes or unique situations and present these to the tax professionals to confirm whether or not there's a deduction or another reportable activity that will hopefully reduce your tax bill. Armed with questions and potential deductions that you might qualify for will be a better use of your time and your CPA's time during the busy filing season. You want to be a good partner to your CPA where ultimately you will benefit for your resourcefulness. The next mistake is to not keep good financial records. I've seen too often where a person actually knows that they qualify for a tax deduction but fails to keep good financial records to support it and so they lose out on that tax benefit. This is especially true for people who itemize. This may be, say, making donations to qualified charitable organizations such as churches, but failing to have a bank record on it or timely written acknowledgement from the church for that donation. Rather than putting cash in that cash basket, what about putting in a check for the same amount that is trackable and recorded? Many people cheat themselves out of deductions because they fail to keep good records. Moreover, should you get audited by the IRS or state tax authorities, you'll have the records to support your deductions so as not to have your deductions or claims for certain credits denied. The fourth tax mistake to avoid is not knowing whether you should hire a professional to do your taxes. My basic recommendation is this. If you take the standard deduction and things are very simple, like your only sources of income is a W-2 and maybe some interest and dividends, you may very well likely be able to file your own taxes using one of the popular tax software tools like H&R Block or TurboTax. But if you sold a home that tax year, got divorced or self-employed, own rental properties, or have any other complicated scenarios, there's a good chance that you'll benefit from hiring a tax professional. Wrapping this up now with a bonus tip. If you're expecting a refund, you'll want to get the refund as fast as possible. So how do you do that? By e-filing, setting up for direct deposit, and not making an error. These three steps will save you weeks and possibly even months in the time that you see that refund money. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in my next video.